It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Hello, this is Mark and Trina Hankins, and this week we're talking about the spirit of faith with our special guest, Brother Kenneth Copeland, and we are thrilled enjoying talking about the spirit of faith. <laughs> so, Brother Copeland, we are very blessed oh, to have you. Oh, thank you, Mark. I'm Praise God. You. The spirit of faith that redneck guy told me one time, he said, make you want to grab a corn stalk, yeah. swing out yeah. over yeah. hell, yeah. and spit in the devil's eye. <laughs> we get some spit ready right now. There was a, <laughs> a, a, a cowboy, a rodeo cowboy, and a, a champion bull rider, and uh, <laughs> he was, he, he's just gotten off the airlines and is listening to my tape of what happened from the cross to the oh, throne. Oh, yeah. And what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost. Oh, yeah. And, and how he had wished to God he hadn't, he hadn't crucified this man. Mm. Uh, God, I lost everything yeah. I had. And he's, he's walking out and he, he came up to, <laughs> came up to the, to the uh, carousel and he, he grabbed his saddle and swung it over his shoulder, and he, he's got his earbuds in, you know, <laughs> and he's got his little cassette player in his pocket, and he just stopped and dropped that saddle and said, Put it on him, Jesus! Put it on him! <laughs> and nobody else could hear what he was saying, and he stopped saw everybody, and he picked his saddle up and went on. <laughs> Put it on him! <laughs> uh, so that's the spirit of faith. That's the spirit of faith. And so 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, We have him. The same That's identical it. spirit of faith, yes, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. He said, we also believe yeah. and therefore speak. And so the spirit of faith has these two main ingredients. Number one, I'm a believer. I believe, I believe God, have faith in God, faith in the word of God, faith in the blood of Jesus, yeah. faith in the name of Jesus, faith in the power of God. I am a believer. I believe and I speak. Someone said it this way, uh, even the the devil don't care what you believe if you'll be quiet about it. In other that's words, it. when you believe and speak, <laughs> that's the spirit of faith. Yes. And that spirit of faith is actually contagious. It's contagious. Super contagious. <laughs> the spirit of fear yes. is, is contagious. contagious. Yeah. Remember this now. In the beginning, there was no fear. Yeah. There was none. Yep. None. Adam was full of faith. Yeah. Nobody sinned and died until Adam sinned and died. Yeah. And God told him, the day you eat that, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. So he died spiritually. Yeah. Now, what was his faith? He was disconnected from God mm. in the spirit mm. and connected mm. with the devil. Mm. Fear. So, what's the next thing that happened? Instead of faith coming when he heard the voice of God, fear came wow. and he hid from him. Wow. Wow. So, fear and faith are the same thing, but exact opposite. Hmm. Just the opposite, yeah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. Fear comes by hearing and listening to the lies of the devil. Yeah. Negative. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a there's like a compass. Yeah. There and just take a compass for instance. Mm -hmm. yeah. North and south yeah. are the same yeah. thing. Yeah. There there are degrees of a mm -hmm. compass. Right. Yeah. But they're exact opposites. Oh. Mm. That's faith, this is fear. Now, so they, the same laws are going to govern both of them. Yeah. Now, you know my mom, in my mama's case, my dad and my mom, you've been to my dad's church uh, years ago, and uh, my dad and my mom pastored in a little town called West Columbia, Texas. They pastored there for 50 years. And my dad's church, there's only 3,000 people in town, but my dad's church grew from about 20 people to over 2,000 people. And there's Praise only 3,000 in town. And so my dad stayed there 50 years, but when they started out, my dad had a heart attack as a young man, 
My mom had a nervous breakdown and was totally controlled by fear. Now, both of them had been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, even called to the ministry. But my mom lived in fear and ended up in depression in the back bedroom for almost two years. But when Dad Hagen came along and taught on the authority of the believers to have faith in God. Interesting, because we knew the Bible, we loved Jesus, was saved, even filled with the Holy Spirit, but we didn't understand how faith works. So when Dad Hagen came and taught on the authority of the believer, my dad took the word to the back bedroom and got my mama to start speaking the word. And he would tell my mama, now say this, And she would say, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And in the middle of that darkness and depression, her speaking the word of God brought her out of that and gave her victory. Mark, what is fear? It's faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But some people call it a a disabling belief. Well, it is. (laughs) Well, um, it... Faith yeah. in a dangerous animal. Yeah, mm-hmm. in reverse, yeah. Now, you, if you can't find the same fundamentals uh-huh. in Goliath's mouth, yeah. then it's not, it doesn't follow the fundamentals. Yeah. Right. yeah. The devil knows he's got to say it. Yeah. He knows he has to. Uh-huh. So when it came up and came time, they're in, I mean, they're, mm. they're there. Uh huh. Yeah. So he, let's go from. You're in 1 Samuel 17. Yeah, 1 Samuel 17. Samuel 17. And, and this is the spirit of faith, David killing Goliath. He's killing Goliath. Yeah. It, and he never did say, I'm going to try. No. <laughs> he never even left a note for his mama in case it didn't no, work. No, <laughs> no. He never did say that. Yeah. He said, I'll go fight him. Yeah. And I will kill him. I will kill him. And he started out by saying, what do you get if you kill him? I, he didn't pay attention to how big he was. What do you get if you kill oh, him? Because he's planning on killing kill him. He's planning I'm on killing him. I'm going to get with y'all. I'm going to get the girl. I'm going to get the money. Yeah. I'm going to kill him. Yeah. I don't care how big he is. And I'm going to break the reproach off of the armies of God. Wow. What was the reproach? Fear of an enemy and you have Afraid. a covenant. And they had a covenant. And so David brought up the covenant, didn't he? Yes, he did. He brought that up. Listen, he was an Orthodox Jew. Yeah. He knew what the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy said. And he also knew the 27th chapter. And if you have any trouble knowing Mm -hmm. why the curse and the blessings in the same chapter, you just need to read 27 and it'll Mm -hmm. tell you. Oh, wow. So it brings a reproach if you know that you're God and you're afraid of the enemy. Yeah. So to know... What yeah. God has mm-hmm. spoken in His Word about healing, about yeah. you know being redeemed from yeah. the curse of the law, and to be afraid of the coronavirus or yeah. whatever—that's mm-hmm. a reproach. It's a re- it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a reproach means to shame. So you got a giant mm-hmm. that is intimidating you. He's shaming that whole crowd. Yeah. And there's different kinds of giants, and everybody's got one that you're gonna have to kill. And so that giant standing before David, and first thing David brought up is, "You're uncircumcised Philistine." Yeah. I got a covenant you don't. That's the issue here. That's the bottom line. And David, uh, (laughs) he knew the word said, no man will be able to stand before you all the day. I want to bring something else into this. Here's David, 17, 18, 19 years old. We know he's less than 20 or he'd have been in the the army of the rest of it. Yeah. Now I'm referring to me. Mm Mm-hmm. He wasn't 25, 30 pounds overweight. Mm. Mm. He took care of himself. Yeah. Worked hard. Yeah. He followed the Levitical law of food. Mm. He was prepared. He was prepared. In every way. In every way before he ever faced that job. Mm. Yeah. Now, think about this. Who made David king? Goliath. Oh, I got you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're the giant you kill. The, the evil. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And it has to be done by faith. Yeah. Yep. I giant. had said it 
for years. I hated exercise. Oh. I didn't want to do it. Mm. I was always overweight. Yeah. And, and I'd starve down and get and, and just break me down because I wouldn't exercise. Didn't oh. like it. Didn't yeah. want to do it. Mm. <clears throat> and finally, the Lord dealt with me about well about living that 120 years. Mm. And he asked me to do it, and I said, "Well, of course I'll do it." I mean, it's yeah. it's it's a mandate to me. Yeah. yeah. And I knew right then I might have to get in that exercise. Right? Uh, now, now, now what you're saying is the spirit of faith works in every area of your life. Yes. So does the spirit of fear. Yeah. I had said how I hate exercise over and over <laughs> and uh, over, and my first day in there. I'm telling you, I'm all excited. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I've got, I got this thing. I'm going to do this thing. Glory to God. And I was going to do some tricep pulls down on the A-frame, and I reached up there and caught that. And, and I said, God, I hate this. Oh! <laughs> and I slapped my hand. I said it before I could get it to stop it. Yeah. I said it until it got in my heart and it was controlling my life. And, and, oh. and, and, I, and I said, God, I do not I love, love this. Guys, I physically felt that devil leave my body. Wow, I like that. I like that. He fed me with that. I fed it to him so long. Yeah. He had every right to do uh, me that way. Now, I yeah. believe somebody's getting this yeah, right today. Yeah, very practical. Now, this morning, well, what are you going to do? I mean, you got to start early, you know, and my call time's 10 and all that. Well, surely you're going to take off today. No, no. <laughs> Just start a little earlier. Oh. Had a good strong workout this morning. Yeah. And uh, only half of it on the treadmill, but now I'm not just walking on the treadmill. I've, I've started an incline. A, a, an incline. incline. Yeah. And, and the, wow. And now my, the, my dream that I never thought I would ever see wow. come to pass yeah. is the fact that on the DEXA scan machine, wow. that, that my fat percentage, my yeah. body fat percentage. Wow. Right in there where it's supposed to be. Yeah, and, and, and it's I'm not, 84 years old. Well, that's a miracle. And you're blazing the trail for a generation. Yeah. Dollars. Well, I hope so. Oh, yeah. you are. Because and that that otherwise I don't have any purpose in doing that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. to do what God's called you to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and now I have a mandate to live that long. You yeah. don't. We can do what you yeah. want to mm -hmm. do about it. But I'll tell you what you have to do is believe this book. Yeah. Those food laws, the law of first mention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in yeah. the Bible, mm -hmm. then yeah. that holds true all the way through the Bible. <laughs> and Genesis 6 yeah. 3, that's about as close as you get. <laughs> now, I'm not going to put up with man as long as I have been, and the days of man should be 120 years. Now, so, now what you're saying is you're believing and speaking. Affects every area of your life. Every area. Of uh, now, I was well, I was on my elliptical machine one time watching you on uh, on TV <laughs> your program, and so I'm exercising, and you came on there. <laughs> this is funny, but you may not think it's funny. But you said, and I want you to confess this after me. I'll never eat another donut the rest of my life. <laughs> And, and I just couldn't say it, brother. <laughs> Here's what I said. I, 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 <laughs> well, maybe a little. <laughs> I said the, the, the rest of the week. How about that? So, but what you're saying is that you're believing and speaking yeah, that, affects that, every facet of your life. Your finances, your health, everything. Every bit of it has yeah. to come here. Yeah. So that. Those food laws are based on that 120. Yeah. So when you f you follow all the way down through wow. the 91st Psalm with long life, will I satisfy uh, him? That's based on 120 years. Yeah. And not long bad life, quality life. Quality life. Yeah. So it, it just tracks all the way through, but without faith. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you you could in the natural. Yeah, so what if you lived 120 years? You yeah. haven't done anything. Yeah. But if you live 120 years to preach oh, the word of faith. The Lord. Oh. <laughs> now, people that don't misunderstand me now. 
Yeah. Anybody that lives 120 years, I, my hat's off to you, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and, and people give God the credit for it, sure. and I love it, man. Yeah. I mean, you live to be 100, and, hey, that's, that's big amazing, news. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. But for a specific purpose. Now, your specific purpose may be, and you may be in, 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 in the car business. Yeah. And that's your specific purpose. Yeah. You need to do that by faith. Mm. You need to do everything you do in that dealership by faith. Yeah. And you, and you need to walk in love. Mm. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's a bit difficult it's a in bit a natural of, business. It's a challenge. Yeah. But you better watch your mouth. Yeah. And Let so, me give you a little story. Right, this one will take a second. <clears throat> I was just in the very beginning of of my flight training and trying to my best to, and I won't go into all that, but <laughs> anyway, I was over in Camden, Arkansas, and that's where I met Gloria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Changed my life forever. Yeah. Nobody had ever loved me unconditionally yeah. until I met her. And uh, anyway, it was time for me to move on well, I'd been using the, the airport car there where I was working in Camden. Now I've got to go on to Little Rock to finish up my training. Mm. And I don't have a car. Mm. I went down to the Chevrolet dealership. Now, I didn't know, I'm going to tell you this ahead of time, because of time. I didn't know that this man was president of the local full gospel businessmen's oh, fellowship. Wow. I found that out years later. Yeah. I walked in there. I said, sir, I, I really know better than to do this, but I don't have any choice. I told him what my name was and I said, I don't have any money. I don't have but $135, but I'm afoot and I have to have a car. And here's what he said, Kenneth, will you trust me in this? I thought, I don't have any choice. I said, yes, sir. So we got in his pickup and we drove past the used lot, past the the garage where they worked on used cars, around behind that, set the ugliest 54 Chevrolet <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. It had been yellow and chartreuse green on top, and it looked like it had leprosy on the top. <laughs> every, every hubcap was bent, and some of them were gone, <laughs> and the headliner hanging down in the back. Yeah. Now, this, this, this is a faith man. He didn't know where I would wind up. Had no way of knowing. I'm just this kid learning how to fall. Yeah. He, and I looked at that car. He said, Kenneth, I traded for this thing. And he said, I no more than got it traded for. And then the transmission went out on it. So I had to overhaul the transmission. Then the engine blew up and he said, I can't sell that thing with the engine blown up on it. He said, I overhauled the engine. Mm -hmm. And then I put four new tires on it. Run, that thing ran like a singer's <laughs> sewing machine. It just looked bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But my point is, here's a car dealer following the Spirit of God. Mm. I had to have a car and it had to be trustworthy and I wish I'd have kept that car because <laughs> I'm telling you, that little rascal run, man. I just, I just ran down the highway like I just didn't want yeah. anybody to see me in it. <laughs> I actually used to have a 54 and a 55. <laughs> but this Holy Ghost man heard in his spirit what to do with this kid that needed a car. Wow. Oh. And somehow or another, he fell in love with me. Yeah. And the question he said, Kenneth, will you trust me in this? Wow. He used spirit language. Yeah. I didn't mm. know it at the wow. time. I wasn't even saved at mm. the time. But my mama was wow. praying. Wow. Wow. The spirit of God was watching after me. Wow. 
and this man was living and walking by faith. Wow. Just the spirit of faith. Spirit of faith. And um, when David, when he killed Goliath, now all the men was ready to fight. Oh Before yeah. Before that, no. <laughs> they, David became the leader that he was yeah. the rest of his life. Yeah. How much time we got to you? I will leave. Verse 43, the Philistine said. Yeah. Yeah. The devil knows he's got to say it. Yeah. The Philistine said, am I a dog that yeah. you come to me with stays? Yeah. The Philistine yeah. cursed David by his God. Yes. Yeah. Mm. The Philistine said to David, come to me. I'll give your flesh to the fowls of the air yeah. and to the beast of the field. Yeah. Famous last words. That's the last word he ever said. <laughs> <laughs> and the David, David said, said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword yeah. and a spear yeah. and with a shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of the angelic armies yeah, of yeah. God. I mean, there were angels yeah, yeah. all over that place. <laughs> hey, yeah. We're going to kill this yeah. horse. We're going to get him right now. That stone is going to hit him smooth yeah. between the eyes like a 357. Oh, man. And you look at other translations. He fell on his face. And then he took his sword, sword. out and cut his head off. Well, which one killed him? <laughs> the rock or the stone? Oh, yeah. But it said both of them. Yeah. No, no. It actually says he hit him with that rock and he finished him off with the sword. sword. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can finish the finish. devil off by oh. just taking the sword of the spirit. I didn't say spirit. nothing else after that, you know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so David said. He finished him. And off. then the, when the Lord said, never <laughs> run at your giant with your mouth shut. Shut him up. So before he ran, he's talking and he's speaking yeah. the word. His he's covenant talking. is talking. He's talking. And while he's talking, and then when he hit him in the head, cut off his head, and the he took it. that head back, he couldn't turn loose of it. Uh, somebody said, uh, David showed you how to get a head in life. So he got that guy's head, <laughs> and he's, he's dragging that head around. Now, you, you know, know that thing must have been big as basketball. Oh, yeah. And he's got it up here like this. <laughs> I mean, he's got teeth, hair, and eyeballs. I mean, <laughs> oh, but what happened? That was the flag. It's a trophy. Uh -huh. That was the flag. This is I the... got it. I, now, come on. <laughs> and it fired that bunch up. Now, where did they wind up? In Goliath's hometown. Oh, man. That's right. Brought reproach. Yeah. To that whole yeah. city, yeah, shamed them. Yeah, they fell down. Wow! When he had that giant's head in his wow. hand, and he took his prize to Jerusalem. Yeah, and then he took his armor, and he's just a teenage boy, yeah. and he put it in his room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He took this guy's armor. He wall. took this guy's huge suit of armor and put it in his tent. <laughs> he was just a kid. I love it. I love it. What a great story. And a great picture of the spirit of faith. That's it. And this is when Jesus said this. He said, whosoever shall say. Whosoever shall say. In other words, it don't make David special. Anybody could have done that. Yeah. At any age. Whosoever shall say. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And Jesus talking about talking to a mountain, commanding the mountain to be removed and cast into the sea. Amen. And so the Lord said to me, when you say that mountain, not only will go into the sea, that means it's not coming back. And you can't see it. And that means there'll be no evidence it was ever there. That's it. So when Trina had a brain tumor, who 30 years ago, we took the Word of God, Mark 11, 23, and spoke to oh, that glory to God. 30 years mm. ago. Mm. And that thing disappeared and hadn't come back in 30 years. And you could have been born again, Holy Spirit baptized, speaking with other tongues, believe in healing with all your heart. And that thing killer. Hmm. That's right. Because until you use, here's the way the Lord said to me, the authority of the believer is not just available. It is necessary. necessary. And he said, in your faith, 
may not prevent all mountains, but it will move It'll all move. mountains. And so, wow, we have run out of time again. And so we'll be right back. God bless you. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Anytime God wants to change someone's life, he touches their mouth. Never underestimate the power of your voice. The spirit of faith opens the door to the supernatural and enables you to receive from God and fulfill your divine destiny. Lift your voice and open the door to the supernatural in any situation you're going through. In the Spirit of Faith book, Mark Hankins shares valuable truths such as never run at your giant with your mouth shut, how to win the war of words, faith is an act, and much more. The spirit of faith is a pioneer spirit. It enables you to advance, break barriers, and go into new territory. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and to be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. The conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the Spirit of Faith book. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Well, I'm sure you've enjoyed these five days of studying the spirit of faith. My life has been changed. <laughs> and with Brother Copeland. Only day. And it's like a fire lit well, in so here. so is mine. I mean, it, just, just to be <laughs> with you guys is... No, it's just wonderful. For we me. are so honored, and and the spirit of faith is something that you're a spiritual father to us. Of course, Dad Hagen and Or Roberts and those that have gone before us, and that spirit of faith is necessary mm -hmm. to do the will of God. Yes, it is, and to follow yes, the plan of God. Mm -hmm. And so we trust you've enjoyed this, and we've got a book called The Spirit of Faith that uh, me and Trina wrote it together several years ago, and uh, this book's available to you. I've got a quote. On on the back says, if you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would move it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. And so, and so uh, the spirit of faith is available to you and we make that <clears throat> available. And we believe that if you'll just feed your faith on the word of God, uh, God will take you places you've never been before in blessing and in his will. for There your is life. a miracle in your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. I believe yes. and I speak. So I dare you to lift your voice and declare and speak the word of faith and declare what God says about you in Christ. And so may God richly bless you and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.